And uh, so before we uh, get into so this is run the, the, this device, and then we'll talk about what it is. I'll move it up front. So uh, if I can have you just plug it in. It should just fire up. Yeah, go around this way. Don't be caught. It's going to send a scalar wave down the wires. Uh, just plug it in. If it doesn't like to do it, unplug it again. Maximum brightness. Lift a 120 volt light bulb right off the shelf at Home Depot, spot of the morning. Lighting up a 100 watt bulb on 38 gauge wire. That's got to help. Don't plug it there. Don't plug it. Can you yeah, repeat perhaps so. for the people recording? Okay, so that's a 120 volt light bulb bought at Home Depot this morning. And uh, I had the shunt across the top. I had no idea if he had it on or not. Obviously, he didn't. Heat. It does get warm because it is, and we'll get back in a few minutes with how it works. But the uh, fact is, is that um, it's not sending electricity down the wires. It's sending a scalar wave. You can put those wires in water all the way there, so it's not surface. It's not high voltage. Um, what do you call it? Uh, skin effect. We'll put, we'll put, that's what the bowl of water is here for. So it doesn't have high voltage skin effect on it. It's not a. Um, High voltage circuit like 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 10,000 volts going down thin wires like they do for long distance transmission. Because if you put those wires in water and I've done it, the, the, it does not affect the bulb. It would if it was high voltage. In fact, the wires can be bare in the water and it still lights up the same. So we can just show that it is not high voltage at this point. So that was just I wanted to show that you could light a light bulb. Just as Tesla says out of his book, uh, across the room, he said he did it even further, like a couple hundred feet in the big auditorium at the World Fair. So we'll just take a short break here, and then we just move the table to the front so it's easy to show.
so what we have going on here, I call this a Tesla hairpin circuit. He did, he did not leave us a name, what he called it. He just called it his device. That comes right out of his book. What we have here is two copper bars, parallel. I have the shunt, which was right across the top, so we'll use that shortly. So we end up with a circuit. We end up with a circuit that's basically a straight bar. You just fold it in half for convenience. So when the light bulbs go on, you'll see that we're touching, on, like if you have like, basically like a metal bar like this, just fold it in half, so we're touching from here to here, or different places on the bar. There's, there is, a, it's a dead short, and it's a heavy, heavy bar. And the bar is located, we've got uh, capacitors, 40,000 volt capacitors, and then behind here is a 10,000 volt transformer used for a oil furnace. The wires go to the uh, capacitors and then to the spark gap on both sides. So the pair, it's a simple circuit. The capacitors are sitting on the circuit, not part of the circuit, in, in the sense of the energy coming from the transformer goes right to the spark gap. What we're going to do here is I got the circuit open here, so the capacitors are not in the circuit right now. I'll just have you plug it in, and we look at the uh, gap. This is what you expect of a normal transformer, like this. this is Oh, yeah. Could you get behind? I can't because I'm going to show this in a second. Oh, okay. Can you plug in? Okay. You see right there, that is what you expect of normal electricity. That's 10,000 volts humming away there. If you take a piece of paper and pass it near, near this, it starts to catch a fire almost instantaneously. Okay? That's what we call a hot flame or hot spark. You turn it off. Actually, leave it on. Leave it on. If I take this and join this to the circuit, it changes. You know, it, I've added, I've just hooked the capacitors in the circuit. So we just put it in, take it off. You want to get this one? So you can see, all I've done is add the capacitors in the circuit. It changes the energy completely. We can't do anything with that energy there except power motors and light poles, which you do right now. Normally, what I'm interested in is that different effect we're looking for here. So now I'll go to the back here and we'll set up for some. And it doesn't pop breakers. And it doesn't pop breakers. It doesn't hurt you either. We noticed that. <laughs> that hurts you if you touch it like that. What about the EMF that comes off? Isn't that normal? It's a scalar wave. It's not an actual electrical wave coming off of it. So that's not the same as a. a it's not, like a, not a radio frequency. It's not a radio frequency as per se. Tesla transmitted on his walkie talkies in the 1800s to finish all over New York City with a scalar wave radio. But it's not a uh, hertzian wave. These are not hertzian waves. So is that, does that cause interference to AM radio, for instance? If you had a radio I had a radio on in, in my shop around this, and I don't know much difference. So that is different from taking Yeah, it's, it's a different, different system. Trigger. Yeah. The spark you can do out here will cause interference. Yeah, I'm sure this will cause some interference too. Yeah. Especially this is really dirty circuitry, right? And uh, again, I perfected this for different purposes, but I'm really just trying to show that what Tesla lectured about it was for real and different. He had this device here in almost every single lecture he went to for 30 years. I went to all the Tesla societies, museums, clubs, and asked them, who built this? I want to know who's talking to this. I talked to Peter Linderman, I'm not kicking him in any way, bearded, all these guys that uh, love Tesla's works. No, 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 we built the Tesla coils, which is right here, and it's different than you've probably seen a Tesla coil. But this, to me, was Tesla talked about this almost in every lecture. He did not talk about his Tesla coils. And I wondered why. Why would he talk about the two bikes? What's so interesting about the two bikes? It's simple, two copper bars, capacitor, and spark gap. I mean, a Tesla coil's got winding and coils and a lot of interesting stuff with it, but this is simple. But he talked about this a lot. And he put it in to his work, writings, in every lecture I could find, the big lectures he had it. So I said, well, I'm going to build this thing. So what we'll do now is we'll light it up and run, show what, what it is doing, which I'll put the shunt back in here. You'll see it's one piece of car uh, bar now. So if you plug it back in, 